So there's many different ways to producing and creating a documentary. And as first time filmmakers creating in a state of change, we wanted to share with you our specific approach to how we brought all the elements together to create this film. And where it might seem most relevant to, you know, focus on gear and equipment or story, there are other videos that we've created explaining our approach to those. But here and now we wanted to explain to you all the other aspects and all the other components that go beyond just gear and story to come together to create a documentary like this in the end. And so in terms of propelling the production of the film forward, uh, it was the two of us that were the main collaborators on the film, bringing together our different skill sets so that we could you know, actually produce the film itself, whereas my background is more in photography and logistics and coordinating all of the aspects of the film, whether that's through permits or interviews, Frank would have a different role. I have a bit more of a technical background in terms of filmmaking, you know, film school and cameraman and, and editor, so I would focus a bit more on, on the technical aspect of the filmmaking. Um, but, it, but then still, even if we both were, you know, delegating the, the jobs a little bit, in general, the creative process, we would, uh, as much as we could, you know, do it together. As in like, we would both go through the questions that we would ask our subjects. But when it would, for example, come to filming an interview, Danelle would take the role of leading the conversation while I would be focusing on, on the camera. Uh, and in that way, we would separate the tasks. But overall, we, we definitely did this together and made sure we always agreed on, on every step we would take. And I think that's a, a great way to actually approach a film, you know, working in a team of two where you can, you know, bounce ideas off each other, but keep the direction and the creative process really tight. Because if, if maybe we had expanded this bubble uh, to include lots of other people trying to uh, give suggestions or advice on the creative process, though we did seek advice from some of our friends, we were really just narrow and lean in our production itself. So that allowed us to you know, actually film something when someone else was available for an interview or the weather was great, because oftentimes it's unpredictable here in Iceland, we could then move to do what we needed to do when we could do it. You, you can you know, jump on something, uh, an opportunity that rises and you don't have to get a whole crew together or a whole team together. Uh, we were always ready to, to just jump in the car and go and film. Um, which, which is very helpful. Our basic approach to filming, you know, interviews or any scene, is that instead of giving too much context for anyone that we spoke to when we had them sit in our chair or when we got them out in the field, we gave them just enough to give an idea of what our general film was about. But we wanted to capture the authenticity and the reactions and the conversations that we were having out in the field or during the interview itself. What we also learned from the interviews was that we wanted to get more out in the field. Like we did most of the interviews in the beginning indoors in offices because we thought it was, you know, the proper location for a certain person to be at. Uh, but we realized that we had to, you know, uh, create scenes rather than interviews. So here in Iceland, for us, when we actually started to create this documentary, we really had to take into consideration of two things, which is access and the weather. And in order to you know, get to a lot of these locations that we, we did film, we were able to get there and be a part of you know, the scientists being on the glacier because I had a super Jeep. I had this Land Rover Defender with really big tires that allowed us to get up onto the glacier to follow the scientists. So in another instance, we were out in the mountains, you know, being able to get to this location where we wanted to film, we had to cross many rivers and be able to stay out in the mountains for an extended period of time while camping. Frank had his Land Rover Defender, I had mine, and we were able to get out there, you know, and be there for, for a while to capture the scene that we wanted to incorporate into the film. Because most of the glaciers and locations we wanted to film at are spread across the south coast of Iceland and we live in the city in Reykjavik. It didn't make sense going up and down 
to these glaciers. Uh, we would lose too much time. We would miss opportunities of you know being somewhere at sunset and sunrise and stuff like that. Uh, for that, we decided to do a, a big trip with an RV, which sort of became our mobile studio. Thank you, uh, Geyser Car Rental, for the RV. So for us, having this mobile studio allowed us to not be dependent on the location where we might have booked a hotel. Or if we were staying in Reykjavik, it's just too far to come back and forth from that. Or, you know, we, maybe we had planned to film a sunset and suddenly it's, you know, really bad weather. So we decide to you know, already go to the next location and not wait for the sunset. That literally happened a couple of times. Remember when it snowed on one side of the mountain? Yeah, exactly. And then we actually went to the other side and it was perfectly sunny. Mm -hmm. If we were stuck to one location, we wouldn't be able to actually, you know, we would have missed a whole filming day or two filming days because of the storm in one location that we were supposed to be just staying in. Exactly. But uh, yeah, it was a fun little trip we had there. Uh, very productive. I think a lot, of, a lot of the film is actually from that trip. Of course, this film wasn't entirely uh, produced out of an RV. Um, we did go back home uh, and, and rest and shower uh, in between. But what was most important uh, going back home was the fact that we already started editing during the process of, of filming. And it helped us in a way to lead us through the story and, and react on what we captured. Because sometimes, you know, we capture something and realize we have to switch a direction or something inspired us. At some point, we ended up creating an entire wall of post-it notes where we could visually understand the whole concept of the film. And we would begin to take notes and quotes out of, out of our editing process and put that and move those around onto this board that allowed us to drive the creative direction of the film. Sometimes you lose the overview of the whole process or the whole story. And by you know, trying to make that order, trying to make that story already with these quotes and post-its, we would realize, oh, we missed the connection between those two scenes. Not even looking at images, just looking at like quotes and themes uh, on the wall and be like, hey, what do you, like, what do you think? Like, mm -hmm. okay, what about putting that poster over there? Oh no, that doesn't work. And so it's like a super quick process to see the, the overall narrative, right? The, the, the themes and, and things like that, yeah. Mm -hmm. The greatest challenge was actually wrapping up the entire film together in the end and creating a cohesive story that made sense. Mm -hmm. And you know, moving these pieces around and you know, doing it on the post-it board and getting into the edit itself, we finally you know, have this story that makes sense. Now, to complement that and to bring out that story to an even greater um, understanding, we worked with sound designer, actual musicians to create a, a soundtrack just for the film and also working with a graphic designer to create a vibe and overall look to create everything in a way that was more cohesive. Mm -hmm. So beyond just the, the contributions of Frank and I, these people were able to bring everything together and to create the output that we're able to present now as this documentary. After all these things were said and done, we had a film. After about a year long, you know, from proposing this topic to completion of the edit, it was about a year. We dedicated enough time. We wanted to dedicate actually more time than planned to make this film. Because at some point we realized we, we have something beautiful here. Let's not rush this um, and, and, and do our best, you know, put our, our heart in this film uh, to be able to be proud to present this film at film festivals. And, and that's the next step. That's where we are now. And uh, we're happy that the film at this point has already gotten into a few festivals and we mm -hmm. can't wait to present it more in person to a greater number of people and to spark more conversation and to see where it goes from there. So thanks, Adorama, and can't wait, uh, can't wait to see where the film goes. Exactly. <laughs>